Hey Flutter developers, I'm excited to share with you the Interactive Media Ads plugin for Flutter. The Interactive Media Ads plugin or IMA plugin was created to help you to make money by running high quality video ads in your Flutter apps on iOS and Android. If you're familiar with the Google Mobile Ads plugin, which enables you to show mobile display ads in your Flutter apps, the IMA plugin works in a similar way, but for video ads. So in this video, I'll show you a step-by-step -step how to configure the IMA plugin and how to show video ads in your Flutter apps. We'll be using the video player package and some advanced Flutter techniques like Widgets Binding Observer to listen for app lifecycle events. If you need a quick refresher on these topics before jumping into this tutorial, we'll have some resources linked in the video description. First, some context. We'll be using the Video Ad Serving Template Specification, also known as VAST. It's an industry standard developed by the Interactive Advertising Bureau, or IAB, to deliver and measure digital video ads. You can generate a VAST ad tag from any VAST ad compliance server. In this video, we'll be using Google Ad Manager with a free Google Ad Manager account. To request video ads from a video player, we'll need a VAST tag, which is basically an HTTP request URL. Here's an example of a VAST tag. If we plug this VAST tag into a web browser, we'll get back an XML formatted response. This is the VAST ad response that is structured according to IAB's guidelines. This response contains all the information about the ad, including its media files, tracking beacons, and so on. The Flutter IMA plugin supports client-side ad insertion, meaning the ads play in a separate video player positioned on top of the content video player. This plugin helps you to trigger a VAST request pass the VAST XML, play the video ad, render associated UI elements, and trigger relevant ad measurement signals, like impressions and clicks. Let's start by creating a new Flutter project. Now add the relevant dependencies by running Flutter, Pub Ad, Interactive Media Ads, and Video Player. Keep in mind, we are integrating IMA using the Video Player plugin here. But if you have another preferred Flutter Video Player plugin, you can use that too. Next, if you're building for Android, navigate to the Android Manifest file located in the Android folder at App Source Main and add the relevant user permissions that are required to make network calls. We'll need this since the IMA plugin will request ads over the internet. If you're building for iOS, you're good to go. Open the main.dart file. All of the code we will write in this video will be self contained here. Let's import both the IMA and Video Player plugins. Create a new stateful widget called Add Example Widget that handles the display and playback of both content and ads. Update our main function to run this new widget. Add the widget's binding observer mixin. It'll be used to control ad playback when the application lifecycle changes state. This will provide functionality for listening to and handling the ad playback depending on the application lifecycle states. Speaking of states, it's time to add some to our widget. Create a variable to store the basic VAST ad tag URL. This particular tag will return a 10 second single placeholder ad. Pro tip, you can find additional sample tags to implement in the Google IMA sample VAST web page. In production, you would generate VAST tags from your ad server. If you use Google Ad Manager, you can generate the VAST tag from what is called an ad unit. You can provide relevant signals as needed and the generator will create a VAST tag you can use. This article linked in the video description provides more details on how to generate a VAST ad tag. Now create an instance of the ads loader, which is used to request ads and handles events from the ad request responses. You should only instantiate one ads loader, which can be reused throughout the life of the application. Next, create an Ads Manager instance, which has the ads request responses, methods to control ad playback, and listens for ad events emitted by the SDK. We'll also want an instance of app lifecycle state called the last lifecycle state and set its initial value to resumed. Create a Boolean called should show content video that determines when to hide or display video content. We'll make it default to true. Finally, create a video player controller. Now let's add the video players for our ads and video content. 
create an instance for the add display container. This is a container object where ads are rendered. Once a container has been provided, we'll call a method to request the ads. For now, let's include a placeholder. For video content within init state, add this as an observer for app lifecycle state changes. Load up the video player controller with a sample video content file. You can use any sample video file. Add a handler to listen for the video content completion. And update the ads loader object. Add another handler to ensure the video content's first frame is shown during initialization of the player. Now, we write the callback functions that handle content pause and resume based on the add events surfaced by the ads manager object. Create a function called resume content that sets the should show content video flag to true, and then invoke the video player controller's resume method. Next, create a function called pause content where the state is similarly updated but this time, the should show content video flag is set to false and call the video player controller's pause method. In the build method, we'll return a widget that contains the ad player, video content player, and some playback controls. We'll create a scaffold widget with a sized box child with a width of 400. If the video controller has been initialized, we'll add an aspect ratio widget and give it the video player controller's aspect ratio value. Within the aspect ratio widget, we'll add a stack. We'll add the add content players to this stack as children. The add display container at the bottom of the stack and then the content player. We can conditionally show the video player widget based on the should show content video flag. Next, we'll add a floating action button to control playback. Provide a child icon widget to display a play or pause icon depending on the video player's current playback state. For the on-pressed callback, we'll similarly check if the video player is playing a video and conditionally call the video player controller's pause or play method. Once again, to show the button, we'll check if the content video controller has been initialized and whether the should show content video flag is set to true. You can now run the app and see the video player in action. By clicking the button, we'll initiate content playback and the pause button will now pause the content. There is no ad yet, as we haven't built out the ad request method. Now, let's request some ads. In the on container added callback, instantiate the ads loader object. For on ads loaded, we'll want to define a callback method that executes when an ad has been loaded. Create a similar callback for on ads load error as well. Create an ads manager variable and assign it the data manager object. Do the same for the ads manager variable we created earlier as we will use it in other functions as well. For the local manager, invoke the set ads manager delegate method and provide an ads manager delegate to handle ad events and ad error events. For its on ad event callback, we'll want to handle the various ad events that are surfaced. Here, I'll use a switch statement to handle various event values. For the loaded event, invoke the ad manager's start method. In our example, this means once the app is loaded up, ad playback should start immediately. For content pause requested and content resume requested, call the content pause and resume methods respectively. For all ads completed, destroy the ad manager object. There are other events surfaced by the IMA plugin, such as add clicks and add completes. From there, you can define how to handle these events as needed in your app. And as for the on add error event callback, we'll want to handle any errors that might occur during ad playback. In this case, we'll fall back to the video content player and start playing our video content. You can also add a debug statement to observe the ad events in our logs. As for the on ads load error callback, we'll add a debug statement to flag any errors that arise with loading the ad itself and fall back to resuming the content playback. Now go to the placeholder function we had created for request ads. Update the return statement to invoke the request ads method of the ads loader object. 
provide the ads request object which defines your ads request. Remember to specify the vast ad tag URL. Now we'll create a function that handles various app lifecycle state changes. For example, if the user backgrounds the app, you want to pause the ad. If the app is foregrounded, you can resume playing the ad. Create a switch statement that handles all of the various app lifecycle states. I've captured some examples of how to handle the app resume and inactive states on screen right now. Just make sure that you keep track of the last lifecycle state by updating it with the current state value. Now, in the dispose method, we'll want to clean things up. Dispose of the video content player, the video controller, destroy the ads manager instance, and remove the widget binding observer instance. That's it, you can now run the app. The app loads, initializes the first frame of the video and starts the video ad playback. The Flutter IMA plugin takes care of rendering all of the ad specific UI elements. Once the ad playback is complete, the video player will resume content playback. Next time you want to monetize your app with video ads, remember that the Flutter IMA plugin provides five key components. The ad display container, the container object where ads are rendered, the ads loader, which requests ads and handles events from ads request responses, the ad requests, which, well, defines the ad request and specifies the vast ad tag URL, the ads manager, which contains the responses to ads request, controls ad playback, and listens for ad events fired by the SDK. And finally, the ads manager delegate, which handles ad events and errors that occur during ad playback. We're really excited to have you try out the Interactive Media Ads plugin with our Flutter app. Take it for a spin, and if you run into any problems, please file a GitHub issue. A link to our sample code is, as always, in the video description. That's all we have for this video. Thanks for joining us, and for everything else on Flutter, head to flutter.dev.